What's up, everybody? I'm Corey. I'm the Dungeon Master. Thank you again for coming to the next episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, click, whatever it is that you guys do. Um, the more you do that, the more people can find us on their feed, and the more people that can join the adventure. Thanks, and enjoy. Hi everybody, I'm Corey, I'm the Dungeon Master. Welcome back to the next episode of Opportunity to Roll. I'm here with Group 2. Say hi everybody. Hi. Y'all. Hello. So, <clears throat> let's recap for the listeners. Uh, the last episode entailed um, you guys kind of splitting up again. Uh, this time, uh, Flora did not go with you. Myla and Aeson went to go speak to more of the nobles. You guys ended up meeting Dan's Br Dan Brimsworth. Um, you met him. He seemed like an okay guy, I think is kind of the feeling that you got from him. Yeah. Um, he did warn you about Van Dusken. Um, and then from there we, yeah, he also brought uh, fried chicken to made a mean fried chicken, yeah, mean fried chicken. <sighs> told me, told me, so give me some advice about my duel. Yes. Yeah. Give you a little insight as to what prim, uh, Pimbrim is, is, is a little bit about, um, from there. I think you split off from you guys. We went to Zachariah and Lynn, who ended up running into the Mangus. And you guys literally have but pretty much one more hurdle. You've got uh, pretty much all of them but the Emerald Fighter. And so uh, it was kind of where we left. It was about 2 p.m., on the 24th, I believe. Yeah. It's on the 24th, 2 p.m. And the last thing you felt was this really odd wind. And, and it wasn't a natural wind like the storm, right? So it's not something that could easily be kind of blown off as, oh, okay, well, well it's raining. There's a little bit of a gust. No, this went opposite from where the storm was coming. And so it created a bit of an odd feeling, almost. Um, from there, though, I'd like to pick it back up. I want to go back with Aeson and Myla. You guys are still in the higher-end quarters of the town. You still have three noble houses still left to kind of observe and, and go to. Um... Or did you want to take a break, go somewhere else? I'd like to pick up there, if that's all right. Sounds good. All right. Asan will um, walk into and stand under the overhead awning as he leaves um, Dan's house. Look around. Uh, it's still raining, correct? It is. Oh, what a wonderful day to do this, Milo, right? I mean, it increases our odds, though, because who wants to be out in this kind of weather? Myla is a little tiny bit distracted by this odd kind of magical feeling that just washed over. But uh, soon um, after, she kind of shakes her head and goes, "Oh, um, 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 uh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, y yeah, I, uh, I'm glad the festival's not taking place today." Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, me too. Um, it's going to be wild, and Asan is going to look around. Just survey. Probably not too many people out to look at. Um, then he'll turn to Mila and tilt his head towards the next house. Shall we? She just kind of like gives a small nod and uh, kind of puts the hood up over her from her cloak under her head and just uh, and starts walking. Asan will walk with her, and then once they get to the next house. Uh, hopefully find somewhere to stand under so she can do her magic trick again. Okay. Um, this one's not going to have as much of a room. There is still, if, if you kind of crowd towards the door a little bit. Well, Asan will definitely get crowding towards the door. Noble must present himself looking his best. 
Yeah, as soon as uh, the, she sees that both of them are under, like, as much dry as possible, she just, like, snaps for Asan, then snaps for herself. Cash press the dissertation. And dry them both off. So you're at this, this rather large stone building. It has all types of gargoyles and intricate stone just of pillars and large stained glass windows. The door that sits before you is an oaky finish uh, with a large dark iron knocker. Asan will take the knocker in his hand and knock, knock, knock. Hold on. So after a few thuds of this iron knocker, um, you'll hear a bit of a footstep uh, and uh, just coming out from behind the door uh, is a relatively uh, small female, humanoid in form. Um, she doesn't seem to be any type of, uh, I wouldn't say nobility. So she doesn't have the dressings of nobility. If anything, you might think um, a servant or a handmaiden. Um, she'll kind of smile to you. Uh, her hair is more of a... Uh, um, so it, it's more like a, a a very light blonde, almost a white. Um, her skin is is still very fair, but you can see that her hands are definitely one of uh, basically a servant. Um, so they're a little rough. Uh, her clothing is not much to mention, but her eyes are what give her away as a little odd. Um, there seems to be something else in, in her bloodline a little bit, as her eyes are this tinted silver. Um, how may I help you? Oh, hello there, ma'am. Um, my name is Asan, and this is my, uh, friend Myla, and we were looking to introduce ourselves to the local nobility while we were in town. Hmm. I see. Um... So you're looking for Sir Van Duskin. Uh, yes. Yes, uh, yes, we are. Okay. Uh, I regret to inform that he is currently in his study and has been asked not to be disturbed. However, if he would like to come in out of the rain, I can go and knock and see if he would be interested in, in, in entertaining. I, I do know that that is... Polite etiquette. Uh, that would be wonderful, and and let him know that the uh, the second son of the King of Graydon is awaiting him. Hmm. Will do. Um, she'll kind of open the door and, and let you guys step in. Of course, there's a long, elegant entryway. This whole building, mostly made of stone, sparsely populated with some interesting. Um, uh, I w I'd like to say, like, throw rugs, really. Um, very old. They look like they could probably even do with a, a bit of a padding down. Uh, but other than that, the stone seems almost impeccable. Uh, polished well, well taken care of, and well dusted. Uh, in this entryway, there are two large staircases, which lead up to uh, a banister and a walkway to each ends of the room. Each end will have two large doors to uh, open up to what seems to be, you could guess probably more rooms or a hallway uh, and then at the very back at the edge of this, yeah, at the very back is a large two-way door up at the very top of the steps she will go up the right side and knock the door very lightly um Sir Van uh, there are people here to see you. Uh, one of them is uh, second in line to the throne. Um, while she's doing this, um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing that we were uh, escorted to like a sitting room. No, no, you were still in this this large corridor. Oh, this large um, corridor. There mm -hmm. are two seats over near the entrance to the doors. So it, it's it's kind of like a, an entryway via kind of sitting romp welcome room. Okay. Awesome. So I'm not going to sit, but I'm going to turn to Myla and I'm going to whisper to her, Myla, this is where we need to be our strongest and most confident. According to Dan, this man is quite a 
a dick. So we must not show any weakness. We must be confident and strong. So back straight, eyes forward, smile, whole whole nine yards. As he's kind of like telling her no back straight, you know, eyes forward, she's kind of like doing like, you know, she's like straightening her back. You know, she's uh, adjusting her head. She's like putting on a polite smile. Just, okay, okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do he'll, this. He'll put a hand on her shoulder and give her a uh, reaffirming squeeze. Hmm. Okay. I'll be fine. I'll be fine, Nissan. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be fine. Nissan will nod and smile as he will cross his hands uh, in front of him, like you know, down towards where his lap is. You know, standing politely, uh, waiting to be addressed. All right. Uh, after a moment, uh, the door will will crack open um, outward, and he'll you'll you'll hear a bit of a whisper between him and her. Um, this will go on for probably a couple seconds. Uh, she'll nod and and make her way back down the steps. She will reach you guys and and kind of look to you with a smile. Uh, may I take your coats? Or anything like that? Uh, may I be able to get you something to drink? Or maybe something to nibble on? Uh, taking my coat would be wonderful. And Asun will remove his uh, his jacket and hand it to her. Myla kind of just takes off her cloak uh, and hands it to her. Kind of gives her a small bow uh, as a thank you. Now it's even in more plain view, Asun. It does have his long sword strapped to his side. Um, it is a fancy sword nonetheless, but, you know, just something his father gave him before he left. Okay. After a while, he will um, make his way out of out of the, the doorway. Um, he will be in very colorful clothing, uh, kind of pillowy, almost. Uh, he'll look to you, uh, each with a smile, as he stands at the very top of the stairs. And for a moment, he almost strikes a pose. Before you see his footsteps slowly making his way down the steps. It's such a lovely thing for you to come and visit me, your highness. I, I trust your travel was not a long one. Uh, great into Croker. What? Few days? I went and took the scenic route, however. Uh, met around, did some tromping, you know, saw the sights. Uh, it was mm. wonderful. Um. Good, good, good. And uh, what see you of the town during this festival? I, I perhaps hope that you are finding things to your liking. Mind you, he's also saying this as he's taking one step slowly. So he's got like a hand trailing the handrail behind him as he speaks to you in a very elegant manner as these movements are very dramatic. I was going to ask, like, is he, like, taking, like, one step at a time with each word? Because it's just because if he is, Myla's just kind of, like, sitting there, like, um, like, her hands, like, just start kind of, like, tapping against, like, you know, each other, just kind of like, okay, you know, hurry up. a will be speaking back to him with a with a more serious and authoritative voice, but still, you know, his pleasant demeanor. Um, hmm. He will be... Uh, uh, the festival is suiting me fine. Uh, we are just around introducing ourselves to all the local nobility, as is customary for nobility from Graydon, at least. Um, this is Lady Leofina. I am, as you know, Aesan Goldhand. And... Um, I just wanted to come and see how you were doing, and I wanted to inform you of some interesting going-ons tomorrow. Ah, I see. I thank you for bestowing such great honor upon me and visiting. Um, I might maybe be able to return the favor if you're interested in more festivities later in the evening. I know they have a few things going on in town, uh, a challenge, so to speak, for the guilds, and uh, I myself am 
putting on a, a play later at the night. A play, you say? Indeed. It's a, it's a revamp, really, of uh, a very interesting Prince and the Popper kind of thing. Well, and he'll I'd... finally reach the bottom of the steps. How tall is this man? He is a little bit on the taller side, so he's about 5'9". <laughs> man, Aeson is so much taller than everybody here. <clears throat> Actually, Milo's taller than him as well. <laughs> it's because y'all are giants. Yeah, um, Aeson, Aeson's 6'2". Milo's 5'10". So. I'm 5'3 in real life. Let me play tall characters. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, fi- I'm 5'11 in real life, so I'm not too far off. But I just wanted to be 6' foot plus, you know, for a few <laughs> so I'm 5'10", close. and I don't feel tall whatsoever, excuse me. <laughs> Well, you see, so there was this guy in grades or in high oh, school. No. I was four <laughs> foot seven when I went into my freshman year, and he was in my Spanish class. He was six foot eleven. <gasps> uh, oh god! I, I was I... up to his belly button. <laughs> I knew a kid like that, but I will say it, talk about it later. He dunked. Um, but so Asan will will not say the the play sounds wonderful, but. Uh, tomorrow, uh, there is going to be a duel taking place. Hmm. As soon duel. as, as, soon as uh, he mentions duel, Myla just kind of turns to hit toward Aeson, just kind of looks at him. Aeson will I look see. back and then look to look to um, Sir Van Duskin. Yes, uh, um, Pembroom has challenged me to a duel. And I have of course, ah. accepted. Yes, yes. I, I would say he probably would eventually. Uh, he had come to our town not too long ago and and challenged some of us. Um, I believe, really, I, I didn't take a liking to duels, and uh, though I did acknowledge him, I did not participate. Uh, but I, I do wish you the greatest of triumphs, Your Majesty. I think I shall very possibly come forward with this victoriously. As I would only hope so, Your Majesty. <gasps> of, of course, my home is, is open to you and your, your stay here. If you need a place to sleep, food to eat... Money at your disposal? Oh, um, that won't be necessary. Um, however, you did say you were a uh, were a playwright, did you not? Ah, indeed, Your Majesty. I am. <clears throat> well, I've I've been written in certain reviews as uh, a lovely playwright. Yes. Well, then, perhaps at some point I will call upon a favor from you, and then the favor you shall receive is a stage in Graydon. Ah, your majesty, you you grace me with such honor. Truly. It will all just be dependent on uh, what I need, but I will see your play definitely tomorrow. I think you said tomorrow, or is it tonight? Yes, yes. Um, it will be tomorrow, late at night. Uh, it will be just before the festivities start the next day. Yes, I will I will come and attend and absolutely bring my patronage and those of my companions, and we shall revel in awe of your skill. I shall see to it that there are some free tickets at the Curia. And I thank you for that. Hmm. N- now, Your Highness, I must ask. I was visited the other day by a young gentleman. I'm pretty sure he had stated some kind of. Uh, not really. Uh, oh, how best to put this? I, I know this. From rumor has been a very tender topic for you. But I hear the dignitary from Eris is in town. And 
Well, it seems that your highness... M <sighs> Majesty Maggie is in town. She is in town? If what is said by the boy is true, yes. He was looking for her whereabouts, as he had apparently come into town with her, but was having trouble finding her. He went by the name of Edmund. Edmund, you say? Yes. Well, I shall have to locate her then. She is a very important person to me, if the, as the rumors you have heard are true. Ah, sorry, I didn't want to be a sticky beak and, and get too into your personal life, your I, I don't care who much, uh, much who knows it. Um, I just want to make sure she is safe. Hmm. Th these times are quite trying between Great and Anaris and quite trying in the land of Talalia in general. Yes. And between you and me, well, Your Highness, I've, I've heard quite a bit fair of rumors as they are hiring guards from Luxbar close by. If you pass through town. I've heard as well. It's it sits sits ill with me. I do not wish to see any bloodshed between the two. We are all brothers and sisters in Talalia. There is no need for petty squabbles to get between us. Indeed. Uh, might I interest you in some tea? Uh, maybe something to, to nibble on? Uh, tea would be lovely. Milo, what would you like? Asan will turn to Milo and look at her. Um, tea would be lovely. Hopefully it won't take too long. He'll, uh, he'll clap his hands to his side. Vestia, Vestia, please, uh, hurry up with our refreshments, dear. Our guests are waiting. Mala kind of turns her head to get to look at Asan, uh, slightly rolling her eyes a bit. Asan is standing straight up at attention as fancy as a man he can be um he knows he's he's encountered this type of noble before so he knows that if he shows any sort of weakness he'll be eaten alive okay. so he is being he is being what a prince should be mm -hmm. even though that is not a son your highness if i might please come the dining room awaits after you, my friend, and he will hold his hand out to have him lead the way. Not for him to grab it, but like, you know, like pointing ahead. Mm -hmm. You guys see more of the, how best to put it, the elegance of his, his kind of clothing. It's very puffy, almost artistry, um, as if it's been made particularly to be a piece of more like a point of communication, almost to start conversation. It's I can't I can't even think about the best way to explain the type of clothing it is because it's not even fully era. It's a bit different. Um. So the gentleman before you is is a lot like he looked in the street, just different clothing. This is a bit more elegant. His dark hair, very long, flowing, almost curly, wrapped in a ponytail behind his head. Uh, his small beard is is trimmed and, and critiqued into a little tiny point with a little bit of a golden tint at the very top of it. It looks as if there's a brass fastener that is just the epitome of his look. Because as, as far as you go down from there, everything is this royal purple and royal gold. And everything between the fastenings of his jacket have these intricate little gemstones or, or some sort of design to them. Uh, amongst his hands are, are a lavishing amount of, of rings. And his eyes give this very soft but keen kind of look to them. So it, it's almost as if, yes, he's he's looking at you, he's being very nice and generous, but at the same time, those eyes, well, they could pierce through your soul if you give them a second. 
which is why I said Asan is standing the way he is and acting the way he is. He knows these guys. You'll be led into a room that is probably just as elegant as the last. Stone working, tapestries along the side, um, one as such with the mark of what seems to be a uh, sort of like a spike almost going into a coffin. Uh, and he'll he'll set you down at this rather large table and and set kind of across from you. So, your highness, your majesty. Uh, yes, good sir. What uh, is there of any way I might uh, potentially help you along your, your stay? Other than, of course, the uh, the evening festivities for tomorrow night. Hey, son, we'll take a second to ponder. Hmm. Um, just like I said, if I ever call upon you for a favor, remember, what is in it for you as well? That is all I ask. Oh, of course. I, I always know when, when calling upon me uh, that your majesty has always been very just and kind as to the payment in which I've received. Uh, I believe I did uh, a, a bit of a favor for your father not too long ago, and he actually gave me the starting gold in order to open up my theater. My father is a generous and wonderful man. He, his love knows no bounds. Indeed. It's such a sad thing to see the strife between Eris and Graydon, knowing that of him already. I, I do, I, it, it, it baffles me, but I was never one too much for the courts. The intrigue, it bored me. Mm. But, not, not to say that I wasn't there for it, but I I just don't understand what has gone wrong. Hmm. Well, in my time in the courts, I have learned many things. Things very interesting, things very useful. I do believe your father, in a way, seems as this, though he's, he's searching for something. That seems to be all that I can gather. I made a dignitary pass through Graydon roughly about a three months time ago. And I assume you were treated well? Oh, of course. I was given one of the loveliest rooms with the loveliest beds, the ornate dinings and uh, lovely meals, and I even got to see some of the uh, theaters that you have in Graydon, though... I must say that if I were ever to change, I'm sure I could give your father a wonderful show. Asan will smile at that and say, well, the next time you are in Graydon, um, and Asan will hand him, he will take out a piece of paper really quick from his back and uh, scribble something down on it and say, next time you are in Graydon, you can pass this to my father or whoever's there, and you shall be able to stay in my room in the castle. Hmm. That's a high honor. Thank you very much. You are quite welcome, my good sir. Your hospi hospitality has known no bounds. So, Vis Vesteria, uh, Ves Vesperia, the female, she will enter the room. Um, she will set these lovely glasses down, almost ornate with this uh, silver or, or pewter trimming almost like vines growing from the bottom of the cup. Uh, inside is a, a, a interesting green tea and she will set down kind of scones and, and small treats on a platter in the center. Thank you, my lady. Please uh, dismiss yourself. And she'll nod to you. A, a son will, will hold a hand up. Sir Van Duskin, she is uh, she has toiled to make us this. Perhaps she could join us. Oh, I I, I really couldn't. I, I still have laundry, uh, and 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 I still have a, a few other chores. Uh, she'll. I it mean, it, it would clear... please me nothing more than to have her join us. She's going to look almost worried at this point. <clears throat> Um, and he's going to look between you and her. 
So Duskin is, is just going to be peering at her for a moment, almost piercingly, and then look back to you, but a little bit softer. Asan is going to be sitting back straight, looking directly at Sir Duskin, hands crossed in front of him. Vespera, you heard the man? He would love your company. Please sit and join us. And he scoots over his tea. You may have my drink as well. And he'll look back and he'll smile. Asan will Clearly a, aggravated. Uh, Asan will give him a polite bow, but also when he, he's back straight, smiling at him. So, <clears throat> as for the festivities, um, mm -hmm. what what kind of year is this for Kroka? I haven't been to the festivities in in ages. Um, is this a busy year? It. Well, the last year we didn't have much of a turnout. I didn't have a play going on, though, so that might have had something to do with it. <laughs> most, most likely. <laughs> I, I've, um, heard, I've heard many tales of your plays, and I can't wait to see one in person. Ah, I see. Thank you. It's such a high honor. I would say that uh, another reason is... Well, last year we had a few rumors about the High King in a certain area. Of course, they were all rumors. The High King's been disappeared for five years. So, so a few of us think that there may never be a return. Well, we can all hope that there is. Um, the High King is a good man, from what I've heard. I should hope so. I, I don't believe I had the honor. And this this Pembrum man wants to... wants to duel for the honor of becoming the High King. So, in my mind, mm. someone who searches for power often... Let's power overwhelm them. And that is the reason why I've accepted his duel. Now, I know this might not be much coming from me. <laughs> I do worry about Pembram. He seems to be the type that has issues with power. Although he's always had an issue with me. For some reason, I can never figure out why. And you'll see him kind of pull a, a, bit, of a, a bit of his bangs back behind his ear. What does he not like about you? <sighs> he seems to think that I'm... Oh, I can't even say it. It's too rude. Uh, <laughs> I believe he used the word... Uh, pr p pompous? He, he probably took exception to you not wanting to duel him as well, even though him, in my opinion, him challenging you to a duel is an affront to you, because dueling obviously is not what you specif uh, uh, specialize in. You are an actor and an entertainer. You are not one for the sword and for the gruels of combat. I did reach out to him as well, your highness, to see if he might be interested instead on a a one-on-one -on -one improvisational challenge. And he's going to kind of give like the mystical fingers as he waves his arms a little bit in front of him. But yes, it seems as though he was not interested. He should have accepted it. The High King is not just about power, it is about being fair and someone who can be kind to all of the people under his control. I agree. Unfortunately, I was cut off by Sir Brimsworth. <sighs> Him and well, that boy. You know, last week he threw a stone through my window, and all he did was pat the boy on the butt. I think that boy should have been grounded stone for a week. through your window. Oh, okay, ball of some kind. But there was a stone inside of it. And that is most uncouth of him. Indeed. Children these days must learn manners. Myla kind of uh, starts fiddling a bit uh, as he says that. He'll kind of give you a very pointed look. You've kind of get the feeling, and and this is the kind of just the a general feeling of what you might get. You ever get that eerie feeling where it's like, oh no, the sharks picked up the blood in the water. Ah, uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's gonna give a light grin. Fuck. <clears throat> Wouldn't you agree? I'm, I apologize. It seems 
we haven't communicated much, as you are also in the room, Your Highness. Um, I'm not uh, as high as um, Prince A-son over here. Um, mm. Just lady is fine. Lady it is. <laughs> That's also going to seem to tick on his radar. Yeah, she's going to try to straighten her back a little bit more. Um, Because, yeah, she's picking up that, like, he's nailing in on her insecurities. You have to say? Well, my lady, even those of us who are not nearly as <clears throat> noble as your highness can still agree that, <clears throat> you know, those who <laughs> break certain etiquettes of our ways of life should necessarily have some sort of punishment. I mean, after all, in ways like this, we have people who start doing brash things, stealing, or maybe kidnapping, running away, turning into heathens. You know. Hmm. I would say that, um, you know, maybe the child... Well, they should, of course, listen to their parents. You know, they're their own free person, and they can do what they want. Well, yes, but it is up to the parents to instill these honors and and the way of life that is procured from our nobility, our, our people who have learned over the years of what should be appropriate in certain circumstances. There is appropriate, yes, of course, but then there is one's own free will. Oh, I'm not trampling on free will. It is one's free will to throw the stone through the window, but one should also know that an apology is due once that stone has smashed a window, would you not say? Well, maybe the person who had the stone thrown through the window deserved the stone to be thrown through the window. <clears throat> a son will turn to Milo and look at her. Yeah, she just, just kind of, like, stops for a moment, realizing what she said, just like... I dare not try to speak against you, my lady, but I think if we kept throwing stones through those windows who we believe deserved it, none of us would have a window. I agree with Sir Van Duskin on this one. There is no reason for someone to go about throwing stones. If you have a problem with someone, you talk with them civilly. Mm-hmm. Well said, your highness. Milo's gonna get quiet again and kind of um, start fiddling with the sleeves of her of her dress underneath the table. He's gonna give a very pointed smile. But, with that being said, Mila comes from a different land. Their cultures may be different there, and I believe they deserve as much respect as we do. Oh, of course. Uh, I was not merely saying that there was no respect, but just that I might see things a different way. Understandable. For for as far as I am concerned, Myla has the same standing as I do. Just as you do, Sir Van Duskin. Of course, of course, as I will continue to address her as my lady. And thank you for showing her the respect that she deserves. Hmm. And he'll give a, a nice small kind of head bow. Yeah, Milo kind of returns it, just kind of bows back. She's, uh, yeah, um, kind of fidgeting more a bit. It looks like she's really. Is she is she sitting next to Asan? I would imagine. Asan will reach a hand under the table and grab her hand and give it a squeeze. Yeah, she just kind of like takes a deep breath and just like. And then just like, straightens her back again and holds her head up high. <clears throat> the tea is lovely, Sir Van Duskin. I must thank it's... you. And um, what was her name again? What was your name, my lady? And he'll turn to the the servant. She'll she'll look up from her glass, uh, having not touched her tea. Uh, uh B Vesperia. Vesperia, thank you for the tea. It is quite wonderful. It's rather lovely. Mm. Yes, we, uh, uh, my lord, and, and ports it from 
the docks close by who uh, get it from certain areas in the world. I, I believe what we're drinking now is is from Claude. It, uh, it it's it's called some sort of uh, moshish tea. Oh, it's rather good. Hmm. Hmm. I I do enjoy a good tea around this time. Hmm. Must I say that um, you can tell quite about a man by the the help he keeps, and as well as you can tell about the help by the man that she serves, and you both are doing an excellent job. Um, thank you. Yes, that is quite the compliment, Your Highness. Except However, one nod. I, I do regret to say that I must soon leave for the theater. I must get the new version of the script to the people. Well, that works perfectly for uh, Myla and myself, as we must go to the the next house and introduce ourselves as well. Um, what have mm -hmm. you to say of the rest of the nobility here? Well, I had been taught that if <clears throat> normally you have nothing good to say, you should not speak it. Though there are a few good things to say. I understand <clears throat> completely. Brimsworth... Uh, though originally not coming from nobility, has found his way happily amongst the nobility. He's quite a good man. Um, it's about all there. Uh, I have noticed that Madame Tepenta is rather interesting. She is one of elegance and grandeur and all around of a very noble lady, judging back from way, way back to the Blue Bloods. Uh, as for the others, I don't believe I've had too much of an acquaintance with them before. Uh, most of them intend on traveling, uh, and one necessarily only comes around once a year. Although he has no kin, and unfortunately the man seems to be pushing an older age, so we're not sure how much longer we might have him. Quite unfortunate. Mm. Tragic. Indeed. However, I've made sure that uh, when the time comes and things unfortunately do happen, I will be able to take control of the estate and see to it that it is kept in order until purchased from someone else of nobility. That is a most kind thing of you to do. Indeed. Well, if you don't mind, you must keep going, as must we. Uh, may we excuse ourselves from your your presence? Of course. Uh, should you need anything, I will be easily contacted here through Vesperia, who will be here most of the day, attending to chores and other duties. And I thank you for that. And Asan will stand, and he will give a bow to Sir Van Duskin, and then a bow to Vesperia. Thank you, my lady. If we need anything, we will come and contact you. Uh, of course. Myla gives like a small smile to her, and just a little bow to her as well. She'll she'll smile, and of course, give a curtsy. And with that, Asan will start heading towards the door. Same with Byla. You guys will will leave the room. However, neither of them will follow you out. Uh, the doorway will be, of course, in front of you. And uh, you'll see that, uh, of course, he'll, he'll give a smile as the door is closing. But he will he will close the door to this, this kind of meeting slash dining hall, uh, leaving him and her in the same room. Hello. Oh. Uh oh, I hope I didn't get her in trouble. Um oh. Uh but as you guys exit the building, if that is what you're doing, unless you would like to do anything else. No. I don't think I'm gonna go snooping around to stuff. Um mm, do I wanna do this? <sighs> No, no. Ignore me. Yeah. Okay. Um, upon entering back outside, you'll see that the rain has picked up again. 
Uh, it's a little bit heavier than it was before. Um, though it's still not full-on crashing down thunderous lightning and rain, it is a lot heavier. Um, I think that's a good place to kind of switch away from you guys. We're going to meet up with Zachariah and Lynn heading towards the stables after just procuring the favor from the Mangus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you guys will be making your way back up through kind of the mid-quarters of the town, um, where most of the festivities can be found during this time of the event. Um, so you'll see kind of the, the arena off to the long distance of closer to the higher quarters. That's in between sort of the higher quarters and the mid-quarters. Um, you'll see a couple of vendors uh, down a few certain amount of streets. This is the uh, uh, more or less the uh, the district for like purchasing favors and items and restocking or mm-hmm. maybe souvenirs for the year. Uh, however, most of those seem packed up as most of those stalls are normally sitting outside, but with this heavy rain, uh, it'd pretty much soak anything. There are a few that are still brave enough to kind of sit out in the rain, but those normally have like tables that they're able to sit out and have kind of like a, a sloping tapestry. They keep their items cl- dry or clean. Mm-hmm. Right. <sighs> huh? So much for purchasing anything today. All right. So what's the plan for when we get there? Well, First of all, to find a... To, f- to find her. Let's see, what we have so far? Female... Fo- uh, like she just, like, has her hand in... Uh, well, she has her chin resting in her hand, just mulling over to herself. Mulling over to herself. Okay, we have a female football emerald necklace. That seems to be the major points of uh, knowledge at this point. That and she loved animals and staying by the stables. Hmm. Not a lot to go on, but... Uh, uh, the plus side, fur balls kind of stand out, but we can't make assumptions. True, but... Uh, knowing these folks... Like I said, they're testing us. So they're going to want us to find them. Hmm. They send out for a little bit of a reason. So. That's show head on. Right. Not much uh, here except for rain and god damn it, the cloak is going to take forever to dry. <laughs> Zachariah just shrugs. Eight. <laughs> So right now, Zechariah is just uh, wandering around in uh, lower quality clothes than he usually wears. Mm-hmm. So it's like, eh. <laughs> it's, at least it's not my good clothing. <laughs> Shut up, it's so, my love. Do we remember mm-hmm. any details that he might have given on how to find her? Uh... The major points was that the fur, female fur ball, gamble necklace, hangs out around the stables. And aside from like the uh, trinkets, I don't think much else was stated with that regard. Mm-hmm. He didn't really say much else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alrighty. <clears throat> so. If you guys are continuing on towards the stables, mm-hmm. uh, you will find that they are pretty packed. Um, it seems that they have horses of all different kinds, even donkeys. Uh, they have Clydesdales, they have draft horses, they have racing horses, they have noble horses, they have pure breeds, mixed breeds, they have white horses, patchings, pretty much anything you can think of. And it looks, it seems that this, this stable, among three others in Croca, are pretty much packed to the brim. Um... You can see that there is a marking map uh, just before you kind of get to the stables itself. Uh, and it says that, uh, basically in common it reads, uh, vacancies closed. Uh, you may 
make your way to any of the two other uh, stables in Croca in hopes of finding uh, some sort of, of housing for your animal. Uh, you can check the lower quarters and the mid quarters. Hmm. It's going to be a bit of an issue. <sighs> she could be at any one of these stables. Possibly. I mean, yeah, but at least we have some sort of... And at the very least, we can just glance, see, hopefully get some... Work our way around from there. As she's, uh, like, adjusting the, uh, both the handkerchief and she's a- attaching the pin as well, both into her uh, chest pocket. Just to, like, make it somewhat visible in case someone, like, would be able to recognize who would see but mm-hmm. not too out of place. And which pin is this? This is from the Mangus? The, yes, the gold pin. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, like having it secure with the handkerchief in a chest pocket. Okay. For the most part, Zechariah is just going to be looking, and his hunch is mainly going to be looking towards the actual like area where the animals are kept. Okay. Uh, uh, where a the Emerald Fighter may be at. All right. If I could get you to give me a potential, uh, not a potential. If I could get you to give me a perception check. All right. And you're just kind of peering over it. You're not kind of like going inside to investigate. Just peering around for right now. Okay. So that is a seven. That is a seven. Uh, with the heavy rain, uh, you don't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, you definitely don't see a fur bog. Uh, it seems that most of the people here um, are either human or some other kind of race. Um, strangely enough, rarely you see a, a dragonborn uh, who is dealing with one of the uh, Clydesdales. Hmm. <sighs> I don't seem to see her. What do you think our approach should be? Vague, yet somewhat open. Don't give away too much information. See if they at least have someone who works here for it. Especially keep an eye on if they know someone with that sort of jewelry. Hmm. Not certain. Play by ear at this point. All right, take the lead then. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we'll head down to uh, get a better look at the area and the people within, especially like around the animals. So Zechariah's going to stay about uh, four to five paces backwards. Okay. So you're going in to investigate, Zachary's staying behind. Well, he's like a few clips, a few steps behind, just to uh, give mm-hmm. a little. Uh, Breathe room, it seems. All right. Uh, the real question is, are you entering the stables? Yes. All right. Go ahead and give me an investigation, then. All right. Let's do this. Is it 12? Uh, with a 12, uh, upon, you know, kind of walking in and kind of taking a look around, just kind of peering through uh, more, of a, more of an actual inquiry. Uh, you're going to find that there is two humans and one dragon born in the stables, but there is no sign of a fur bog. Hmm. Let's see. Um, what are each of them doing? Like the dragon born, well, Lin would know, but it's like apparently the dragon born is like t- 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 to a Clydesdale. Yeah, he's uh, brushing down a Clydesdale. The other two men are getting feed for the rest of the animals. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Lynn will actually approach the Dragonborn since she, they seem a bit interesting. Hmm. Uh, hi, excuse me. Dragonborn's uh, Oh. Well. <clears throat> Sorry. Yes. Uh... Sorry to interrupt. Mm. Uh, I was just curious. We're looking for someone who 
may frequent the stables or maybe work for some of them. Do you happen to uh, have a female furball frequent around here? Never heard of her, never seen her. Really? Never heard of her, never seen her. Hmm. Insight? Hmm. You might use an insight if you wish. Yes, I would like to insight. Uh, am I close enough to be able to do so? Uh, I would say yeah. All right. I would say for you, though, Blue, it would be at a disadvantage. Well, you know, um, that's not needed. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a seven. Yeah. Let me see what he's got. That's a seven! <laughs> um, so you are both able to see that, that that might not be the truth at all. Mm-hmm. Hmm. No one thing that description you know of. Nope. Especially not one with certain garments. If you're looking for uh, a lady of the night, you can find her in the brothel. Uh, sorry, not in the mood for that at this time. But, mm. um, I don't know, I just have this sort of feeling. Maybe, and she's going to be like reaching into her coin pouch for a second. Maybe something to, I don't know, you might know something that can help lead the way, lead to a proper location, or certain someone who would know better. Mm. And she's just like taking, uh, Probably like two or three gold coins out, just enough for him to see. I'm surprised you're even talking to me with that on your chest. And he's going to motion to the, the golden pendant. Yes. Mm hmm. Favor of the Mangus. Hater of most races. Mm. You're not the type I wish to speak to. So, unfortunately, you can flare all the gold you want, but. No. Hmm. Uh, Zachariah kind of just stepping up at this point. You also forgot to see the handkerchief. We're looking for multiple people for multiple reasons. The most pressing one I need the Emerald Fire's assistance with. Because <clears throat> even so... I don't think we have too much of the favor of the Mangus, more than just the cooperation. He's no friend of ours. Think of it like this. If we, especially pointing towards um, Zachariah, have his favor as well as a hammer, you think it's going to be important for all of them to be involved? not really my place usually to give away that kind of information, but you might find her in the upper town. The Cathedral of Aphrodite. Every so often she'll go there to feed the pigeons that they use to send messages. It seems to be about that time of the year. Time of the day as well. Interesting. Well, Thank you. Mm. Oh, and uh, trust me, you didn't hear this from me. What are you talking about? You never saw her, you never know her, known her. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And just with that, Zachariah's already spinned on his heel and he's walking away. Backwards mm -hmm. kind of wave. <laughs> she will uh, palm two gold coins in her hands and say, like, Sorry to bother you then. Looks like this is a bit of a waste. And offer a hand for a shake. Do you know much about the Dragonborn? I uh, can't say I do. Not exactly someone I see in my line of work. He's going he's gonna to stop for a minute. He's going to kind of take a, a hand. And you're going to see his, his crimson red scales kind of push out some of the uh, the 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 dead hair from the brush and everything like that, kind of clean it off a little bit. See where I come from. Dragonborn, well, they work hard. We don't take handouts. Not meant to be a handout. Didn't mean to offend. 
No, it's fine. But uh, we like to earn it. Not that you're doing anything wrong. I've not met many of my kind who haven't felt this way. He'll, uh, he'll gesture out the other hand to shake yours, the one that he currently knows has no gold in it. She will, uh, give in knowing, accept and nod, and give a hand to shake. He'll smile, and he'll return back to his work. Okay. And, uh, slowly back out of there. Like, like, she's gonna look away for a second because she feels kind of embarrassed, but at least knowing that there's someone good like that in the world. And just, like, uh, make her way out of the stable. All right. So, ready to go to church? <sighs> Might as well see how the other temples are. Hmm. <sighs> Not a place I thought I would see myself at. Oh, well. Let's get going. Right. Why not? If anything, at least the environment, even if you're not a follower, tends to be a good place to just sit and relax, knowing there's a bit of peace in the world. Uh, I would beg to dis disagree, but we have work to do. Right. Fair point. And make our way up. All right. So you guys are going to make your way through Midtown up until the, uh, the richer area of town. Uh, there will be a large cathedral. Uh, it is uh, dedicated to what seems to be some sort of uh, uh, some sort of sea foamish symbol. Uh, and of course, you can see that up above the main cathedral, there is a small bell tower which seems to have the looks of some sort of cage uh, and the flapping of, of certain birds around the area. Uh, can I do a check on the symbol, the seafoam symbol, as you said? Sure. Uh, what kind would that be? Religion, I'm assuming? You could do religion. Uh, you could also do, uh, I think, let me take a look here. So it would fall under either religion or history as well. All right. That is a 16. Uh, with a 16, uh, let's see, we got a history. Um, in the history of of Aphrodite, it is said that she was born from sea foam. Uh, she was kind of uh, amidst between the water and, and rose from the sea foam herself as she formed her form. Hmm. Uh, so it seems to be kind of like the, uh, the symbol of this cathedral itself. Hmm. <sighs> All right. So, what do you think they're feeding the pigeons at? Hmm. I don't know if there's anything like my uh, contacts. Tend to keep them in an open area, give them some air. Especially, like, with the sort of leavings they have. Don't exactly want that, st that thing going around too much. Mm -hmm. Most probably the roof, if anything. <sighs> well, let's see if we can find our way up there, then. After you. So Zachariah is just going to. I, I guess he's going to just circle the building for a little bit to see if there's any uh, doors that seem to be off to the back, possibly to that seems to go upwards. Just like a staircase kind of exit. You can, you can give me a quick investigation if you like. All right. Hell, five. <laughs> um, with an investigation of five, uh, you wouldn't be able to be able to see anything kind of similar to that that you're looking for. <sighs> Fine. All right. I guess inside it is. Let's go. Oh, I just realized I didn't mean to laugh at the roll. There was something else that came up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then, when you guys enter the main double doors uh, one you're going to be affronted by a very lovely sight inside 
Uh, the cathedral is full. Um, most seats have been taken. Uh, they seem to be of, of kind of middle class people. Uh, there is the hierarchy of the what seems to be the main, uh, or what are they called? Uh, they're not preachers, they're... Chaplains? Yes. Uh, the main chaplain seems to be uh, standing on a pedestal. He seems to be reciting some sort of uh, passage as he seems to be wrapping a, a, a tie of rope around two people's hands who seem to be intertwining them. Um, to the best of your knowledge, you have just walked into a wedding. Awkward. Though nobody really seems to be like it, it. So you guys didn't loudly come in, so nobody seems to really have stopped mm -hmm. or to seem to be upset in any general means of your guys's entrance. So, uh, is this area of the church just the main part, and there's like a no way to go through without going into this wedding, or is there like a way to go around possibly other rooms to possibly check and to not disturb this wedding? Give me a quick perception. All right. I'd like to assist with that, if anything. No need. That is a natural Oh, 20. wow. So with a natural 20, with everybody sitting and, and kind of taking a look around the area pretty quick, um, the layout is pretty simple. So you've got the main floor with uh, several pews. Uh, you have to the right of you, uh, behind certain pillars, there are these boxes for confessions. So over to the left of you are um, doorways leading into what seems to be some sort of back room or, or more of a corridor uh, leading into further of the, the actual place itself. Mm -hmm. <sighs> So kind of just uh, kind of leaning in over towards uh, Lynn. So you think we're appropriate or should we dress a little bit more appropriate if we're going to be moving about? What do you have in mind? Well, it's a church. Uh, it probably won't be too much of a bother for right now. Initially, to go check around, see if there's a way up to the roof. He's going to point off to the uh, left side, towards the doors that seem to lead to another rooms. <sighs> as long as you remain respectful, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh, there's a bit of the issue. Anyway, let's get going. Uh, he's going to start uh, walking off the left corridor. Yeah, and then we'll follow. Okay. Uh, upon walking into the corridor itself after opening the door, uh, you'll find that uh, there is kind of a, a, a Y direction in which you can take. Uh, if you walk down this corridor a little bit, you'll find rooms uh, that you have windows through the doors or, or kind of like openings on the doorway that you can see that the priestessage and other kind of clergymen are, are kind of having their own places to sleep in here. Uh, there is another corridor to the left that will take you back to the kitchen, and in front of you uh, there will be the stairwell leading upstairs into the bell tower. That's the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like just going to be uh, walking off. Uh, let's get this done as quickly as possible in his mind. Okay. Uh, Does he look visibly agitated? He looks uh, very stoic. Hmm. Very, uh, what's the word? Just low eye lid. Just straight to the point at the moment. Okay. All right. Sort of like how Lynn was with the. Setting up for the Mangus. All right. And she'll follow. Just after. Oops, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, after a bit of a walk up the steps, and, and this is three, four fly, three or four flights of stairs. 
uh, that you're going to have to kind of get up to. Uh, you're going to open what seems to be kind of like a, a wooden door that, more like a trap door, really. You kind of flip it over, it lands on the other side, and you can walk up the rest of the stairs into the actual bell tower itself. Um, the bell tower is uh, roughly, I'd say, 25 by 25 feet, uh, full square, and in the dead center of it is the large bell made of uh, iron. Uh, walking around it, you'll notice there are cages all over the place, and there seems to be you know, bird secretions. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over most of the floor. Uh, so that's that's kind of covering the area. Uh, but you will hear kind of a, a person kind of you know kind of whispering and uh, just softly mumbling mm-hmm. to these creatures. Uh, as you make your way uh, around, you're gonna get a more of a view of this person. And their frame is is relatively slender. Um, their clothing not so noble. Uh, their clothing is is pretty interesting, almost patchy. Uh, black pants, uh, maybe a tarnish of like a, a bluish kind of fringe of fabric around the hips, uh, a satchel to the side, uh, and this lovely small button vest. Uh, you'll see the almost stone tech. Not textured, but stone-colored skin that uh, kind of colors uh, most of the body, uh, and her hair is seems to be a reddish in color, although the sides mostly shaven with a small ponytail in the back. You will notice that uh, there is, if you kind of come around the corner a bit, there is a large amulet uh, kind of draping around the neck. Uh, this is rather bulky, but it is made of pure emerald. So, uh, at this point, Zechariah has been uh, ve- trying to be quiet, not a so much, you know, quiet of, I don't want you to n- know I'm here, quiet to a, I don't want you to know I'm here, but if you do f- see me, it s- doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, and he's just going to kind of try to listen in to see what she's saying. Just curious to try to get a read of the person before we talk to her. You might hear a bit of, of cooing, almost, as if uh, she's not really saying much of anything, really. It's it's more or less like uh, some sort of form of communication in a way. Um, She'll right. look over to you, and you're going to notice that her eyes are, are also of some sort of pure emerald color. Oh, wow. Well, hello there. Hello? How may I help you? Uh, actually, uh, you could help us a lot. Uh, and pointing off to Lynn in the, the uh, pocket on her <clears throat> shirt. We've been needing to speak to you about the city. What about? We needed to arrange a meeting with all the guild leaders for assistance. Because in uh, taking a look around, but obviously it's uh, being on the roof of a building, pro- uh, probably very little place to hide. Uh, but still somewhat being cautious and a little bit quiet. We have reason to believe that the town is in danger and could use the assistance of the guild leaders. And of what danger? A catastrophic danger. One that could potentially risk the lives of hundreds, if not thousands, of people that come here. And... You believe I can help how? Well, mainly hoping to use the, um, well, your authority and the assets and, yes, and influence. You influence the manpower you have as the leader of the Legendary Guild 
mainly to help prevent people from getting into the city and keep people away whenever possible by the day of the event. And get the people who are in here out. Hopefully without drawing too much, um, too much attention. But honestly, at this point, anything to get to keep the casualty rate as low as possible. What's... Uh, tell me a little more about this threat. It's... Um... Just gonna be looking around the area. Um... Actually, one second. What's the... Uh, you said it was about, what, probably like 4pm now or something? Um... Judging by the time that it's taken... Uh, both getting information from the stables and every, uh, you know, moving up to a different area in the town. I'd say it's probably about five. All right, so it's starting to get a little bit dimmer. Yeah. Right. Um, is there any type of shading within the bell tower itself? Like a darker. For, for the most part, uh, I would say there is good coverage. Um, most of the cages line around the bell tower itself, which blocks out most anybody from being able to really kind of jump in or, or really spy from the outside. Um, more, on, more on lighting wise. Lighting wise. It's, I, I wouldn't even say it's still dark. It, it's getting darker in the evening, but you're still dealing with sunlight as it's kind of an open bell tower besides the cages. Um, okay, I see. Though the visibility from anywhere around might be difficult with all the rain that's kind of pattering the rooftops and, making anything beyond kind of like a 30 to 40 foot kind of scan almost impossible. The danger itself is one of a very big nature, which we have been given a bit of a foresight to. Nature of kind. Well, I don't want to see anybody hurt. So, I'm willing to help. But, uh, where shall we meet? Well, I believe that's up to the hammer, is it not? We haven't been told of a specific place, have we? I can recall either Hammer or Feleska was supposed to meet up and determine that. Feleska will take us to some downtown bumpkin place. I, I, I just wish to be out and open a little, maybe out of town. We speak, we come back in using nature as our cover. Well, that's a little bit out of our jurisdiction. That's more for Hot Hammer and you guild members to decide. I don't think we have the pool power to suggest anything when you are helping us. N no worry. I, I, I'll send word to Hammer. Mm. And I'll send word to Drumkin Wharf. Mm. I understand you have your difficulties with him, but... Please understand that he's Those helping Those lives with... are more important. Exactly. Mm -hmm. For I that, you, you no need to explain. Well, then I think that we are done here. Then thank no, you for your help. No, uh, not, not quite yet. Hmm? Who, who might you be? I'm yourself. I'm Zacharias Law. And you? Just call me Lynn. Lynn. Lynn Kildren. Kil Kildren. Yes. I see. And you are of guild? Uh, no. Well, no. Just people who have been thrust into a situation 
wandering mm-hmm. do-gooders. Pretty much. Makes you know, <laughs> you know those old tales that kind of came to life for once. We're too wise. If you wish to be taken serious by guild, you should join or become guild. We are more open to those of our people. I see. Not that I will not listen, but it may go much farther for others. If you're really looking to make an impact. Anything to make this whole thing go smooth. It's been on our minds, but I think it's more than likely we've come to an impasse and it's becoming a pain to not be one at this point. Uh... Most adventurers find it that way, as it was built specifically for adventurers. It is quite helpful. Even when not fully part of guilt, you find friends and places never expected. I mean, fair point. In the very least, it would be a very useful source of uh, information and cloud to be part of a guild. Hmm. No, we don't have to discuss that with uh, our other friends. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, that's definitely going to be on our minds. I, I, I will ask this. I've asked most of the others. How likely do you think this will work out? The working together of the other guild members. Le- of the legendary guilds. Getting us to speak, not difficult. Getting us to agree, difficult. Getting us to help, not difficult. We like people. We like our people. We love guilds and we love the people who we protect. So, good chance. Well, that's the most optimistic message I've heard all day. I can assure you, if people risk, or is, is, is at risk, I will help. Even okay. if they say no. All right, well, thank you. We need more people like you in the world. Well, some might not agree. But thank you. Mm-hmm. And, and kind of giving a snap to his fingers. Oh, before we go, um, we introduced ourselves. Uh, who might you be? We know you as the Emerald Fighter. Is there anything else we may call you? Berga. Berga? Yes. Mm-hmm. Berga. Berga. Berga Krinchkov. Mm. I'll commit to memory. Well, until we meet again, and Zachariah is just going to start heading towards the exit. Yeah. Uh, then we'll take note of that, but give Burke a light bow and say to her, Thank you again, and may Taiki grant, grant fortune upon you. As she does you. She's going to have this soft smile on her face and just follow Zachariah out. Mm. All right. So you guys have met all of the available uh, legendary guild leaders. Now the main thing is like trying to set up a location and meeting time and we have to go on that with Hammer and Feleska. And Fleska is flaky kitty. Uh, God. And also meeting with the guilds. I mean, actually making a guild. You know what you have? Yes. Issues. That means we need to think of a name for the guild. Uh, How's molten gold sound to y'all? 
I'm pretty know. sure. I told Lynn doesn't I'm have sure the muscle for that. <laughs> we could talk about this ad game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. Copyright infringement there. We're going to have... Well, we have Zachariah and Lynn heading back to the inn, I presume, correct? Nothing else left to do. And uh, Zachariah wants to speak with Flora anyway. Uh, oh, there might be one thing Lynn would ha- want to do, but that would require her meeting with someone if she knows. Hmm. Uh, he, has to, he has to uh, go do his date with Flora. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, like on the way back, Zachariah, do you have a moment? I'm just thinking on the way. Mm hmm. And I want to be sure that we can up our chances a little more. I mentioned to you guys before that I want one of my, uh, one of my contacts while in town. Mm hmm. I mean, has some stuff to speak to him about already, what with the faded cloak and all, and see if they can actually, I don't know, see what they can, see what eyes and ears are about here, see if they can uh, press some press some hands, see if they can, I don't know, act a little bit, act a little bit more like brigands, trying to divert some attention away. Just every little bit of energy. We, just a little bit, um, just every little bit of effort we can get. Blah. My tongue. All right. Seems like a, um, I mean, this is more of your area, but if you think this will help, then sure. Though, I, I wanted to talk to you as well about the, what they said about the guild. Mm-hmm. Now, I still think it's a bad idea to lump ourselves with Aeson and Myla at the moment. You, for obvious reasons. Um, but... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you remember if people themselves can uh, be taken off of a registry for a guild? She was curious about that as well, and especially as one big part. Um, would she recall if, like, if there was a way to remove yourself from a registry or move your name from a guild listing, or especially in Lynn's mind, if there's a way to track you by your name with a registry? Um, so you would know that any kind of bartender that is part of the official bars that deal with the guild, um, they would be able to tell you the name of those who run a legendary guild location-wise. Unless you have taken a quest, uh, they can't really kind of give out that information, and normally they wouldn't give out that information for, you know, personal privacy. Uh, Unless, say, you know, circumstances were dire and, and, you know, you were needed... Uh, maybe a relative was hurt or or certain information needed to get to you in time. Uh, But other than that, that's about it. All right. And for Zachariah's part, if there's a way to remove from the registry. Um, If if you are part of a guild, uh, you can disband a guild and they can remove that from the registry. Um, you can also leave a guild at any point, and they would remove you from the listings of said guild members. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I'd be relaying back to him. Uh, from what I recall, um, the only real way in order to get your name off the listing would be to the guild or have the guild disband. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I see. Well. Then I have an idea. We need to be part of a guild to earn a little bit of trust. Our dilemma is two of the two of our group we really shouldn't be lumping in with yet in during this whole event until at least a little bit later. 
The only issue is, if I recall, it takes, what was it, three members to form a guild? Form a guild. It was four. Yeah, I think it was four members. Uh, actually, would aliases work in that regard? Uh, potentially, yeah. Hmm. I mean, they could go by aliases for the time being. <sighs> we don't really have much choice. We don't know many other people aside Flora. Uh, that's that's the issue. It's starting to seem like uh, Flora, at least being a placeholder for right now, uh, at least until uh, Aeson and Myla are ready. Uh, she might have to join in. I'm. I, I feel like she probably would, but I don't know if we should. Ask her to help us. Uh, to... Are you cut out there? To kind of... Uh, the guild life, I don't know if she would... Uh, I don't know if it would suit her. That, and she'd be more intertwined in this whole ordeal. More than ever. Uh, I'm just gonna bite her lip a little bit. She, uh... She might actually know a little more than than we anticipated. Apparently she did come here because like she's gonna be lowering her voice a bit and leaning closer to Zachariah. She felt something odd, like an ill wind come around this area. So maybe she Maybe she sends something off as well. Mm-hmm. Even a little bit more reason to give her the ability to not be tethered to us, just in case. I, th I guess we have a little choice. Of well, maybe this plus the guild thing is best to bring up with the others. I mean, they're you all. You could involved. always join a guild that's pre made. And yeah, just kind of uh, lifting up his chin and sigh. That's very rude, you know. He's not even looking at her. Just as very <laughs> <laughs> she'll. Uh, so Falasco will kind of make her way in between your guys' feet as you walk, and kind of turn around, kind of back walking as as you guys communicate. Sorry, I just got here. Just putting a two cents in. Mm-hmm. Well, that is helpful, though. A little bit of a more of a warning if you're here. I spoke, didn't I? Fair and... Touche. At least you actually showed up. Speaking of which, good news. We got all their support. Good. Good. All right. So, what's next, then? A meeting. Mm. Meeting. We need to get them together. <sighs> we probably shouldn't do it in town. If word got out that anything weird was going on, it might cause a ruckus. She Very agreed good. as well. Yeah, Emerald Fire didn't mention that she'd someplace somewhat out of town get back in by... She said by nature. Hmm. Well, maybe we could rally outside and head to a close-by farm. I'm sure I could probably procure a little bit of space for us. So, be before that, though, what did you mean by a pre-made one? A guild? Oh, well, guilds accept new members every day. Hmm. Is that an offer, or is that just information? Information. Uh, I hear the Faded Cloak is looking quite often. <laughs> I'd rather uh, not. 
Bet they are. But in all seriousness, I'm sure there is some kind of a smaller guild that is uh, requiring people. We'll keep our ears out, though. I would say that guilds aren't announced to the people. So though you may sign a form, and it may eventually get back to the High King, you wouldn't have to tell everyone of your plan. True. And most of the signatures would stay with the innkeeper. Normally they don't allow others to look through other guilds' papers. True, but if you're saying Croca is the way it is, I doubt that book stays closed too often, especially for prying eyes up top. Oh, you would be surprised. The last person that has been known to actually have been able to look through that book is the High King five years ago. Mm hmm. Captain, that's a cure. Well, uh, it's an enchanted book. Well, each of them are. They're all interconnected. That's why when you sign a page here in, say, Croca, the king over in Graydon has the same copy of the book there, and it transcribes everything that's over on it. So in a split second, once you sign, he sees it. No one else. It's very hush-hush magic. Mm-hmm. That's both <laughs> alleviating and... But, no, sorry. Nah. Terrifying. Exactly. I agree. That much power and that much knowledge. I'm envious and furious of that sort of thing. I can assure you one thing. I've been in a guild for up to ten years now. And it's perfectly safe. I've never once had a problem. I don't deny that. It's just more the fact of not if, but when. That's just my line of thought. Well, let me see this. We outnumber most guards and most manpower in most towns. The guilds, as a collective, Probably about have about as much firepower as Graydon itself. Maybe more. Power of the people and all that, yes. I would say probably. Uh, Lynn at that point is just gonna be like crossing her arms a bit and just like thinking like closing her eyes thinking to herself, just at the same time though, you can do a lot of damage with nothing but a name and but a name and a place. Normally, the only thing recorded in that book are names. The only way a person of any kind of inn would be if they've designated a quest for that person at that local area. It's not written where your location's in. Uh, it's just if they happen to know. Right. Mm-hmm. The guild system was originally created to protect everyone. Farmers get tax cuts for helping them out and paying wages to the guilds, and we get paid more money for taking these quests. In return, we gain fame and admiration from the people. It's perfect! But really, they don't have much information to take us down. They don't have anything but a name. Hmm. All right. Well. <clears throat> and, and what of your opinion? Do you think that, that this pursuit will aid us as well? Could hurt. I can tell you this when speaking to a council of guild legendary leaders being part of a guild could only help. <sighs> True. We need every advantage we can get in this point. Now, don't take that as a 
a formal thing that says that if you're not one, that we won't listen. By any means. That's not what I'm saying. True. Uh, I just don't want to come off as opportunistic to uh, joining a guild. All for this whole meeting itself. All right. Well, thank you. I will see to it tomorrow. I will tell you the area in which we will be meeting. If we can get everybody to agree with the sizes of our guilds and the people below us, we could potentially have this place cleared out in a day. Perfect. Right. Remember, though, we have to... Sorry. I must warn you, though you are most certain that this might happen, if for any reason it doesn't, there may be very big repercussions. Well, if anything, you can ask Tibius. He was able to see firsthand the sort of evidence we have. The only problem is it's some with finicky in order to show more than once. Oh, I, I'm not saying us. But I will say that Kroka will not be happy of losing out all that money. <sighs> then we have That's... to do this as soundly and not draw too much attention as possible. And those are consequences I'm willing to take. And I, I would hope the others as well. All right. Well, I shall see you tomorrow. All right. Well. Thanks again. And with that, she'll, she'll walk off. You'll notice that she, she seems to have some sort of uh, light force field of some sort of arcana above her head. Kind of shielding her from the rain. <laughs> of course. Lucky. He's adorable. Uh. <sighs> All right. I would guess it's time to go see a man about a book with our name in it. All right, guys. Well, with that, I think that is a good place to end it for the night. I'm gonna keep going. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's know. fine. We're gonna make a guild. Uh, on angels. No. That's why I'm glad no. we're ending now. Hi, my name is Max, and I play Aston Goldhand. Just want to remind you all to come and follow and subscribe to us on iTunes, Podbean, and Google Play at Opportunity Roll. If you guys want to get some cool magic swag and help support us, head on over to our Patreon at Opportunity Roll. Don't forget to like our Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube at Opportunity Roll so you don't miss any updates on what we're doing. And if you want to get in touch with us, please contact us at opportunityroll.podcast at gmail.com. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Cobalt Press. We use their Tome of Beasts to keep our players on their toes. And we'd like to thank Purple Planet Music because we use their music for our uh, podcast. Have a good day, everybody. And remember, keep your opportunities open.